My name is Brad and welcome to the Brave Kids Art Club. Today we're going to be learning about and drawing a Canadian goose. It's actually called a Canada goose, but I have a really hard time saying that because I've always called it a Canadian goose. But it really doesn't matter. I'm probably going to say Canadian goose the whole time. You've probably seen one before, haven't you? They are all over North America, so there's a really good chance you have. In fact, just the other day I was riding some paddle boats with my family in downtown Boise and we got to see a ton of these geese up close. Look how cool they are. It's kind of crazy to think that in the early 1900s there weren't many Canadian geese around. They were nearly hunted to extinction. But now, after some conservation efforts and they're being protected, we have around 5 million of them around North America. I don't know about you, but I am ready to draw one. How about you? Awesome! Okay, well let's go get started. All you're gonna need is a clean sheet of paper, a nice sharp pencil, an eraser, a dark marker or a pen, and of course, something to color with. All right, well, let's start drawing our Canadian goose. I think I want to have mine swimming. So I'm going to start with the basic shapes first, and I have to kind of decide where they're going to live on the page just to make sure it all fits. So I'm going to think of the head's going to be right up here with the neck, and then right over here is going to be the body. Okay, so I got to put it a little bit to the right and near the bottom so I have enough room for that long neck. I'm going to start with an oval shape, kind of like a football shape. So let's do it right down here. We're going to start with it, maybe kind of play with it a little bit. Ooh, it's getting bigger. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Doesn't have to be perfect. We just need to have the main mass or the area for the body. All right, so you got that down? All right, let's put where the head's going to be. Let's see. This is going to come out. Let's put the head right over here. Let's put the head right over here. A little circle. Okay. Now they have really big bodies and they have long necks. So I want to make sure I have room for that. So let's connect the head to the body next. I'm just going to roll off this curve. Just follow that curve. Come down, come down, and then bring it back to the body. Well, I could probably bring it down lower. Let me erase that so it's a little clearer. All right, so there we go. We got that. Roll it down and then we got to do the other side of the neck, which is right about here. So let's bring that down. We'll just copy this same exact shape. We'll kind of go like that, and then we'll bring that down. Well, actually, let's bring it down to the bottom of that oval. How about that? Like that. We don't want to make it too thin at the top. There we go. Long neck, the head, and the body. Now let's start adding some more shapes. Maybe we should do the beak next. So we'll start again from the top. We're going to follow that curve, and we're just going to have it go down a little bit. Down. It's got kind of a longer bill. And then we're going to kind of go straight back over here. Let's see. How about that? That looks pretty good, huh? Now, the one thing that I see people make mistakes with is when they're trying to connect the beak to the head. <laughs> and if you do it just like this, it looks like they have big old cheeks, but that's not actually how the beak fits on their face. It wraps around their face a bit. So we can erase this part right here in the middle. We don't need that we want it to connect, but we're going to go up here and do this funky little shape here because this is what it actually looks like. Well, it's like a weird S shape, but now it actually fits on its face and it's not just jutting off the front end of its head. <laughs> it wraps around the face and then we can add more details here in a second on the beak. Just like all geese, Canadian geese migrate to warmer, safer places during the winter to help find more food and to raise their chicks. Which sometimes mean they can fly huge distances, like two or three thousand miles. And when you look up in the sky, you actually might see them flying in a V formation. It looks just like the letter V up in the sky. Why do you think they do that? It actually has to do with wind resistance, so it makes it easier for the birds in the back of that V to be able to fly because there's less wind hitting them in the face and slowing them down. Then naturally the bird in the front would get tired, so when it gets too tired, it would just move to the back and the other ones would move forward. And when they need a break, they just go to the back. How cool is that? Now, for the rest of the body, it's not really rounded off on the end because the feathers all kind of shoot off the back. They fold back and you'll see them kind of pointing out. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of pointing this, making, adding this little point on there. So we're going to go back like this, follow that, and let's just add a little point. There we go, where his little tail feathers are. Now, there's a lot of little details we can add on here, but we'll try to simplify them just a little bit. If we go off the back here, 
kind of do a straight line off the back. We'll add a few little feathers. They have a they have a bunch of little feathers that kind of stick out, so we don't want to make it too perfect. So maybe we have some feathers there, and maybe right about, let's see, let's draw a line right to this little point. And then let's do, so maybe some feathers that go a little bit further. They have these little black tipped feathers right here in the back, like that. I'm trying to make it look as much like a Canadian goose without, you know, adding so much detail that it gets really complicated. I like to simplify what I'm drawing just a little bit get the idea, get the essence of what we want to draw. All right, so we got that, we got the body, but we don't see all of this when they're swimming, right? So let's do a little wavy line here to add the water. So I'm gonna go, woo, there we go. Perfect, it's hard not to make noises when you're, <laughs> when you're drawing. I don't know about you, but I find it very hard to not make noises the whole time. Okay, let's erase everything under the water. We're not gonna see that. Oops, almost bent my whole page. Oh, there we go, it's starting to look really good. Okay, what's next? Let's see. Maybe we'll, still, well let's do the, the line here so we remember that this is gonna be black. That's where it kind of ends up. The whole head up here is gonna be black, except the chin strap, right? This little chin strap. So if you need to erase, erase some of that, we don't need the rest of that circle. Those are just guides for us. Now we can do is go from here We'll go back. Let's go back a little bit further because we gotta make room for the eye. Maybe we should draw the eye first. Let's do that. Okay, we're gonna draw a little circle there for the eye. And then we gotta draw that chin strap. That's what makes them look so unique. And you know it's a Canadian goose. So it's kind of got this funky shape. Yours can look however you want, but as long as we have some white there underneath the chin, I think that'll work. Okay, cool. And it'll look a whole lot different once we add color. So don't get too discouraged if you're looking at it and saying, this does not look like a Canadian goose. It will, don't you worry. All right, we've got to add the pupil in there and I draw a big pupil to make it look cuter. Somehow that just always works. The bigger the pupil, that's the black part in your eye. The bigger that is, the, the cuter the animal looks <laughs> or the person, or whatever you're drawing. All righty, we're getting close. We're getting real close. Okay, there's also some other little feathers here. Let's just make sure we get their feathers right. So we're gonna draw like this little, uh, little curve right here. There's gonna be different color feathers here. And then we also probably right about, maybe right where this meets up right here. Let's take that and do like a, a little curve, like a little backwards C shape to connect with that. Maybe do another one to kind of connect to here. Now again, I'm simplifying. If you look at a, the feathers on a Canadian goose, they're pretty intricate. I mean, there's a lot of them and they, they a lot of different colors, a lot of different textures because all birds have different textured feathers. Their feathers are for different reasons. Some keep them warm, some help them fly. So on here, we're gonna draw these, uh, we wanna make sure we just have them all in here. And then maybe when we have this line, we'll draw some, we'll kind of simplify it a little bit and draw just some lines going down. Let's see. Okay, this is starting to look good. So here's those little feathers that, We'll draw some little lines here. Those are the little ones that are, you can't, they don't, they don't help them fly or anything like that. And then let's do, let's do these little things. They look like little sideways birds. You know when you're drawing birds <laughs> in the sky, just the two little lumps? Let's just do that on the sides. Do a few of those to kind of show that the way that their feathers, their feathers look. It's super easy to spot a Canadian goose because you can tell that long black neck and then they have that famous white chin strap. But that got me wondering, why do you think they have such long necks? There's actually lots of reasons, but two of the main reasons are it helps them get food. So when they're in the water, they can reach down under the water. And then when they're on land, they can have more options for food because they can reach higher. And the second reason surprised me. I didn't realize that when they have a longer neck, it allowed them to have a wider field of vision, allowing them to see predators from farther off. That's a pretty handy superpower. All right, I think this is looking pretty good. Is that neck long enough? Yeah, I think the neck's, the neck's long enough. Okay, so I wanted to thin out my beak a little bit, make your last second changes here before we go and we we color this in, or we, uh, not just color it in, but we're gonna outline it first. Then I wanna add a little bit of a mouth, so I'm gonna start there at the tip and kinda go back, and there we go, just a little slight smile. Look at that. Look at this little smile. Maybe this is too, maybe that beak's a little too thick. I keep thinning it out. There we go. 
I think that looks better. And then it got a little nostril up here, just like you have. Okay, well, good, we're good, we're good. I think if you wanna add some waves here, you can do that with color, or you can go through real quick and add some in the, ooh, if we add some in the back, that makes it look like, you know, it's, uh, it's a little dimensional. Like, there we go, we just add some more waves here in the front. Layer it up a little bit. Oh, I like that. Okay, let's move on to the next step, which is outlining. So now that you have the sketch, we're gonna outline. go okay so we have it all outlined Ooh, I'm excited to color this in but first you have a big eraser that'd be really nice to have you can use your little one too but I like to have a big one so I can go through and I can just wipe off all of the under sketch and then nobody even has to know that we had to do a lot of sketching and <laughs> a lot of work before we got to this point but next up all we have to do is erase this and uh, we'll get to coloring so I'll go ahead and do that go ahead and take some time color yours and we'll catch up at the end which fact is not true about Canadian geese? I'm gonna say it again, not true. A, they can breathe in oxygen while both inhaling and exhaling. B, they are the fastest bird in the world. C, they will not back down from a fight. Or D, they lose all their flying feathers once a year, meaning they can't fly for a few weeks. The answer is B, they are not the fastest bird in the world. And there we go, all colored. Oh my gosh, doesn't it make a huge difference to add the color on there? There's so many distinct markings that it's hard to tell what kind of goose it is or what kind of bird it is when you don't have all the colors. So sometimes it's kind of like magic at the end. So hopefully you left some room right here on the edge. I left a little bit of white. I actually colored over that the first time I had to redo this because I actually colored over these little markings and those are what make it so unique. So how did yours turn out? Hopefully it looks different than mine, so don't feel like you did anything wrong if it doesn't look just like mine. Mine is how I draw it and yours is how you draw it. So I'm really excited to see what you drew. And before you go, make sure the last thing to finish up any piece of art is you need to go ahead and sign your name on there to show how proud you are that you did it. Everybody knows you made this piece of art. Oh, I almost forgot, I didn't give him a name. What is his name? I keep saying him, so I'm thinking maybe Wayne. Wayne the Canadian Goose. <laughs> what do you think? Well, thank you so much for drawing with me today. This has been so much fun. I feel like Canadian geese kind of get a bad rap because they're everywhere because they are protected, but they also poop everywhere. So people think they're kind of dirty. But as we learned today, they're really amazing animals and they're really pretty. Well, before you go, always remember to be brave, be creative, but most importantly, be you. I'll see you next time. But wait, one more thing before you leave. If you love drawing with me here in these videos, you are going to love our new book, The Nature Explorer's Drawing Guide for Kids. It's full of interesting facts and step-by-step -step instructions for drawing all kinds of plants, insects, and animals, helpful art tips, and even blank nature journal pages in the back for you to go outside and make your own discoveries. Check it out for yourself. You can find it anywhere online where books are sold.